here with Alan Steele, an upcoming science fiction writer. Alan, how did you get started writing? I got started writing really very early. I, uh, I wrote my first story, as I recall, when I was in about the fourth grade. How long did it take to get published? It took me 15 years to make my first sale. I have in the basement of my house three large boxes filled with short stories that I wrote between the ages of uh, 15 and 29. The first book was called Orbital Decay, and it was a novel about hard hat workers in outer space in the early 21st century. I finished the book and sold it uh, at about the time that I was getting really sick and tired of being a newspaper man. And so uh, that was my get out of jail free card was that particular novel. How did it feel when you found out your first book was going to be published? Absolute disbelief. I was at a convention in Boston and I had, an, uh, I had uh, lunch with the editor and she told me, oh yes, we'd like to buy your first novel. And I managed to remain calm at that point. Uh, I said, oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, and managed to remain calm until I got back to my hotel room. And that's when I jumped up and down on the bed for a few minutes, like a little kid. Uh, it was an absolute, the, one of the biggest moments of my life. What do you do for fun? I, I like working with scientists a great deal, and I find that most of them uh, like finding a science fiction writer walking into their office and asking them for what they know. Uh, it's a way for them to communicate their knowledge to the outside world. I'm a, uh, a collector of first edition science fiction paperbacks uh, and, and have a very large collection of, uh, of, of, of firsts. Uh, have everything by uh, Heinlein, Clark, Niven, Ellison, uh, all in their first editions. Rocket Ship Galileo was the first one that I read, uh, Rocket Ship Galileo by Robert A. Heinlein. Uh, my eldest sister checked it out of a high school library and I conveniently forgot to return it. Do you have any advice for young writers? Write every day. Uh, there's only one way to get good at, at this type of thing in that you have to practice it every single day. What's new? What's coming up for you? My last novel, uh, A King of Infinite Space, is coming out in paperback uh, this next summer. It's uh, a continuation of the Near Space series that I began with my first novel, Orbital Decay. Right now I'm, I'm uh, preparing to write an undersea novel. So for the last three or four months I've been studying oceanography. And now I'm just nuts for oceanography, uh, uh, for, for studying about uh, uh, black smokers, uh, uh, volcanic vents, uh, exotic species of, uh, of fish, uh, different designs for submersibles. Uh, I've, 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 I've learned a little bit of scuba diving, so I've had that experience. So that's what I'm crazy about right now. And the next book will be the one which, uh, which Misha Merlin is going to be publishing, uh, uh, Sex and Violence in Zero G, which is a uh, chronological compilation of all the short stories that are in the near space universe, including the one that won the Hugo Award a couple of years ago, The Death of Captain Future. How did it feel to win that Hugo Award? It was uh, the best moment of my life after birth and marriage. Uh, it was absolutely ecstatic, and especially when I did not, I honestly did not believe I was going to win that thing. My wife was sitting next to me holding my hand when Larry Niven opened the envelope and read the name of the story in my name. She said that she felt her, my hand slip from hers. She turned around to look and I had levitated about six feet off the ground. I adapted uh, The Death of Captain Future for the Seeing Ear Theater uh, with Brian Smith, the director and producer. Seeing Ear Theater is a series of audio plays which are put on the World Wide Web on the Dominium website which belongs to the Sci-Fi Channel. It gave me practically the chance to rewrite this particular novella and do a different take on it. 
and add in stuff uh, that I, it later occurred to me long after the story was written uh, to put in there this time around. My wife and I moved last year to a small town in, in uh, western Massachusetts. Uh, not far away uh, is a diner, uh, a roadside diner, where for a while we were eating breakfast two or three times a week. And I noticed that there was a waitress who worked in the place who seemed to be less interested in waiting on tables than performing. Uh, she was carrying on as if there was a, an audience. And the more and more that I watched her, I began to realize that this is somebody who had watched really too much TV and sort of now envisioned her life as being a sitcom. And she was the star. Uh, and when I, and one day I, I said to my wife, she's in her own private sitcom. I'm not paying for this, one of them yelled at her. This isn't what I ordered. Joanne ignored them. She was already advancing on the two college kids sitting in the next booth. They stared at the fly cam as it moved into position above the table. What do you have, guys? One of the students pointed at the drone. Uh, hey, is that thing live? Taped, she said briskly, dropping her voice for the first time. Just pretend it's not there. She raised her voice again. So what do you have, kids? He gawked at the camera, absently combing back his hair with his fingers. The other student nervously looked back at his menu. I, uh, can I have, son, what were you smoking last night? Startled, he looked up at her. What? Oh, you were smoking what? She beamed down at him. That's new to me. I'm just a poor country girl. Huh? What are you... Look, dudes, let me rack with you, okay? She ordered her, uh, she lowered her order pad, bent over the table to look them in the eye. The fly cam dropped a few inches closer, its cameras recording everything. I was her age once, and yeah, I used to get pretty wild, but she took a deep breath. But dope is just a bad trip. You know what I'm saying? A thing is a terrible mind to, huh? Ah, damn it. <laughs> she shook her head, glanced up at the fly cam for a moment, then returned her attention to the students. I mean, mind is a terrible thing to waste, and you've got your whole future ahead of you. I... what? Stammering with disbelief, the student glanced between Joanne and the hovering drone. I... hey lady, I don't use drugs. Neither of us do. Her companion, uh, his companion peered up at the fly cam. Hey, we're straight. I swear we're straight. <laughs> Jeez, we just came here to get breakfast and... Think about it, Joanne, said Solomon. Just think about it. I'm in a very lucky position. Uh, the thing that I do for fun is also the thing that I do for a living. And it's, it's nice that I've, I feel fortunate that I've been able to turn my hobby into my profession. Mm -hmm.